All right, now we're going to go ahead and go into the next step and talk a little bit about how we're painting these and how we're finishing them. Basically, what I'm using is uh, a lot of different colored nail polishes. You can pick them up at Walmart. I like the brighter colors, uh, you know, the ones that are real glossy, prime, you know, bright colors. The oranges that are real bright oranges, so they stand out. Yellows that aren't real, you know, milky yellow, but more of a mustard, bright yellow. And then, of course, your two basic colors that you're using the most is white and black. You also need a clear, something that is um, going to give it that wet look, that real glossy wet look and protect uh, those colors once they're uh, painted on the finish. So, I'm going to show you a little bit here about how I do this. Basically, um, I'm not really putting down any of, kind of a base color. If you're using bright uh, colors, they should come out all right on these jigs without needing to do kind of a base coat or a primer coat, so to speak. Um, what I do is I get a hold of the hold of the jig with a pair of forceps, lock it on there so that you can move it around. We'll take this red color here and do one in red. Um, you gotta shake them up good. Basically, we're just going to dab it on there, and then after you've got some on, we're going to just spread it around, and I try to get every little spot on here without leaving anything that's not colored in the base color. Make sure you stay away from the eyelet. You don't want to paint it shut. Regular jig paints on, uh, on an eyelet will... Or you can kind of punch out, but this stuff here, it dries pretty hard and it's a lot more difficult to get cleared out. But, once I've got it on there, I'll go back then and kind of just brush the excess off of it. Okay? Get the excess brushed off of it. So that it's a nice... I want to be able to see those bumps and those ridges of the wraps that we put on it, okay? And if it's all just globbed on there like a big drop, you aren't going to see that. Once you've got it evenly coated on it, what I like to do is uh, use one of these racks that um, my wife uses to cool off cookies, but I've stolen one. You can see it's covered in paint, and I'll just let it hang right on there and let it dry. Typically I'll put maybe a light over it, a warming light or something to help kind of bake on that finish a little bit. Or even just a uh, floodlight or a spotlight from in the garage or something, a drop light. But that's the, how I'm doing the base coats. Now, the way I go in and do some of the other coats, I'll show you on some of these jigs here that I've got here for an example, is I will take the brush and put a dab a dab of polish right on a piece of white paper and then you can take a toothpick I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit so you can see it good you take a toothpick and you just touch it I've got a skewer here so that it's a little bit easier to show you but a toothpick you just touch it and when you just lightly just dab the jig in different spots you're going to end up getting a nice dotted jig. Now this is a green one. I don't know how well you can see this. Let me put it on those forceps here so you can see it better. This is a green one in which I put dark green dots on it and then went back and put white dots over the dark green. Let's see if you can see that very well or not. But again it's dark green dots with white dots over the dot. I'm going to move this at different distances so that maybe if it's not focusing. That's a pretty smaller jig there too. Um, you can see some of these different colors I've done. Here's red where I put a, a red with a um, white dot over it and then red dots over the white dots so that they really really stand out on this. If this isn't showing up I apologize. You can go to the um, pictures that I've posted on the site 
uh, of the different colors of jigs uh, that I've done. They're surrounded by a dime or a penny or something on there in those pictures. Again, it's the pictures I put up from In Search of Perch. But just by simply wiping this in this dot and then putting your first layer of dots on the jig. Then you come back and uh, you can put a second color down and clean the end of this off and dip it uh, or just grab a different toothpick they're pretty cheap <laughs> and just dip it in that second color and just lightly dab over the dots you already did um, what that will do is you'll get a real raised bumpy look on these jigs it makes them look real buggy kind of a caterpillary look to the dots they're raised up if you've looked at the wolfram jigs or the fiscus jigs when they put dots on, typically those dots are with a thick paint. They really sit high um, up off the jig. They don't sit flat. Um, also, I've got um, a couple different ways you can put dots on the jigs. Here, I'll turn this back over here. Um, I've got uh, like a black, I mean, it's like a black epoxy pen. Um, the one thing I don't like about the black epoxy pens is that when you put a dot on them, uh, the dots there, but it's not raised up. It's just real. It's such a thin paint That's the benefit of working with this nail polish is there's a little height and a little depth to it When you put a dot on something with a toothpick It tends to be a little bump and putting a second color dot on top of that makes it even more of a bump I like dark colored dots on light colored surfaces and then if you're gonna put a second dot on it Put a light colored dot on that dark dot. That's what makes the contrast, it makes it stand out. Using medium colors on top of medium colors, it really, it might look really good close up, but it, it just doesn't have the depth or that real alive buggy look to it, I don't think. If you put a blue dot with a green dot on top of it, it just doesn't stand out. White dot with a blue dot on it, white dot with a green dot on it, a yellow dot with a dark green dot on it, those are light and dark colors that contrast each other and they really do stand out well. And you'll notice the difference as you make your jigs. Uh, you'll start getting preferences for what colors you think works best. But I ice fish a lot of jigs and I tell you, I, I love, you know, Fiskas, I love Kodiaks. Here's some of the jigs I use when I'm ice fishing. I've got all different styles of them. But the jigs that I caught the most fish on last year when it comes to bluegills and perch are these wireworm jigs. And, that, that's pretty satisfying just knowing that you can catch a fish on a jig that you make but this particular jig happens to be a style that with all these different creative colors that you can use you can always find a color that's working you might have to switch up four or five times but you'll always find a color that works we got somebody here trying to get in the video you want to say something Cole? no? alright well Hope this helps. It's addictive. Once you start building them, you're going to want to build a lot of them. I'd like to put a special thanks out to Avon for kind of showing me the style and showing me how to build them. Last year I must have made about 400 of them. Gave a lot of them away to friends. Um, big thing is, is when you store them, store them in a box with a little bit of piece of cardboard or something in it because moisture kills these things. Um, these trout hooks that we're building them on, these nymph hooks, a uh, little water in them. If you store them for a week, you'll get rust on everything. So you really want to take care of them. Put them in individual little plastic bags so that they always stay dry. When you're done using one, dry it off on your shirt before you put it back in a bag. That way you know it isn't going to uh, be just a rusty mess next time you want to use that jig. Again, thanks for, thanks for watching the video. If you have any comments or complaints, feel free to post them. I hope you like them. Hope you like it. Okay, I hope they do too.